welcome to Nice. This is where the World Cup really starts for Scotland. And fans from all over have come here to watch the game. I'm Jane, I'm from Dundee and we're here supporting Scotland's women. Come on Scotland! We got here yesterday and since then it's just been incredible. Absolutely loving the atmosphere. I've never been to a women's international or a big women's game. I'd like to see what the atmosphere is like. So this is where it will all happen for Scotland, the first of their World Cup games against England. This is the Alliance Riviera, otherwise known as the Stade Denise. It holds over 35,000 people and Scotland are hoping for a big crowd on the nice. night. Sports scene follows this programme, so now might be a very good time to put that kettle on if you don't want to know today's results. Now, plenty of excitement in the English Premier League today. Champions Manchester City fell eight points behind Liverpool in the title race. That was after suffering a shock 2-0 home defeat to Wolves. It was a bad day at the office too for Manchester United, who were beaten 1-0 by Newcastle. Matty Longstaff capping an impressive Premier League debut with this winning goal. Heather Dewar is there too for us now. Heather, is the atmosphere building over there? It certainly is. Check this out. We're at the Trocadero, Rebecca. It's absolutely beautiful. Very balmy evening tonight. You probably see the Eiffel Tower in the distance. It's great. We've also got a guy who's playing tunes down there, by the way, so you'll probably hear them very shortly, but it's a great atmosphere here. We'll talk about that later, but first, let's kick off with some news from the World Cup, shall we? As football's world governing body, FIFA, says this year's Women's World Cup in France is on track to be the biggest ever. Scotland are still hoping to qualify from their group despite two defeats so far. But just what could this tournament do for the women's game globally? From Paris is our sports news correspondent, Chris McLaughlin. Well, I've come to Edinburgh tonight ahead of their big Challenge Cup game against Bordeaux, not to watch the rugby, but to see what Edinburgh are doing behind the scenes to allow those who are visually impaired to follow the game. We're using a new concept, which is a Braille rugby board. It's not often football's European champions compete on Scottish soil. But this weekend, that's all about to change, as Liverpool come to Edinburgh, their venue, the home of Scottish rugby, and a tie against Serie A giants Napoli. So could we one day see a Champions League final being held here at Murrayfield? Well, if the SRU get their way, the match this weekend could just be the start of bigger things. So big ambitions then for the National Rugby Stadium. But what about events like this coming to Murrayfield? What about the local community? Do they welcome them? Well, you bet they do. And I've come to meet some of them. But when I was a young lad, Liverpool was full of great Scots, you know, Kenny Dalglish, Alan Hansen. It covers three stages, from Dundee to Dunfermline tomorrow, Glasgow to Perth on Saturday, then finishing in Edinburgh on Sunday. A gruelling challenge for some of the best riders in the world involved, including this Olympic world and Commonwealth champion. I'm excited now. I've been um, nervous for quite a lot of the running. Like excitement's definitely overtaken me. This is the place that it all started, here in Rue, here down in the marina. It looks a little bit different though back then. Yeah, it wasn't as developed as it is now, but it brings back an enormous amount of happy memories of kids playing around in the water, having a wonderful time. Well, let's find out who had it. Jenny Faulkner, lovely to have you here. Tell me why did you think it was important to come and support this? Oh, well look, there's over 25,000 people taking to the streets of Glasgow today. This is the biggest kind of sporting event that people can get involved with in Scotland. What a great event it is. Very good evening from Liverpool, where Scotland now face a mammoth task if they're to reach the top eight in the Netball World Cup. That was a aim going into it, but tonight's result has made that extremely difficult. Well, over 82,000 people have bought tickets for this event, which makes it the biggest golfing event for women ever in this country. Behind me is the Fans Village, the fan zone where there's plenty going on for all ages and fans from across the world have come to watch the spectacular golf here on show at Glen Eagles. Now female athletes don't often talk about their period or about how it affects their performance, at least not publicly. Now though, more and more women in sport are revealing how performance issues and injury rates seem to be related to menstruation. Heather Dewar's report begins with her speaking to the footballer, Jamie Lee Napier. Some people don't like talking about their period. They get quite embarrassed, which like, it's quite a, a shame really because it's a natural thing. Having a period is a natural part of being a woman, but talking about it publicly and talking about how it affects you is still a pretty rare thing. 
Athlete Eilish McColgan is someone who has bucked that trend. There's still no concrete evidence to suggest that being on your period can affect you negatively while performing at high level. For some athletes though, it can have a huge impact mentally. Speaking exclusively to BBC Scotland, the current British 100k champion admits having run for Scotland while anorexic. She says the problem continues to affect the sport. Heather Dewar reports. She is one of the brightest talents in Scottish endurance running, but this athlete has a secret. For long spells of her career, she suffered from the eating disorder anorexia. There have been times when I did lose control and I became, I, it did become a fight against the disease because I wanted to run. They call it Time to Tackle, a band of players from all walks of life who use football as a form of therapy. It's an idea set up by this player who last year tried to take his own life. I sent my wife a message basically saying goodbye. Um, I stood at the side of the track for a while, just waiting, and, uh, and I sort of heard the train in the distance and I seen it. So this is the Solheim Cup, and pretty heavy it is too. This is what Katrina Matthew will try to bring back home with her once again in 2021. And if she does achieve that, She'll be the first European captain ever to win back-to-back -back victories. She'll be going with a tried and tested formula, bringing back her vice-captains for 2019, Suzanne Pedersen, Laura Davis and Catherine Imry, of course, though. Pedersen ended up playing in the event, but she says she's very much looking forward to the role. Matthew has won in America before, but as a player back in 2013 in Colorado. The venue for 2021, the Inverness Club, designed by a Scot. And the North Berwick golfer will be hoping once again that the link with Scotland can prove to be a very good omen for her side. Heather Dewar reporting Scotland, Glen Eagles.